universities. He also worked in private practice in London, building up a portfolio of strategic property advice for major UK house builders. Dr. Waters is a charter property surveyor and member of the Royal Institute of Charter Surveyors and a fellow of the Higher Education Academy. Dr. Waters, thank you so much for joining us today. I'll hand it over to you to start your presentation. Uh, thank you, Lynette. Good morning. Um, I'm very pleased to be here um, to give you uh, some insights into my presentation, which is going to focus on the resilience of real estate. So it's going to be a historical look at how real estate has performed against other asset classes and why it should be part of a, of, of a portfolio or a diversified portfolio. Just very quickly, and some of the discussion today will be about what Heriot, what university delivers uh, in terms of real estate education. We have had um, a presence in Dubai for over 10 years with our postgraduate master's programs. And in 2020, September this year, we've launched and we'll um, go with a undergraduate real estate program, which is the first of its kind um, in, in the region, which is a partnered delivery with Edinburgh Business School and, and the real estate department. So it's offering school leavers an, an early pathway into property so I'm, i'd be happy to take questions on anyone interested on both the undergrad or postgrad but if we move on to my presentation and, and go on to the next slide please i just want to remind ourselves about the the characteristics of, of of real estate and why real estate does well in the medium to long term so real estate through academic studies shows some indication that it's a good diversifier against equities and bonds so when when we see volatility or movement in equities, we have some supportive, uh, positive development within real estate so that things aren't moving on a like-for-like -like basis. So that will mean that re the returns in the portfolio are smoothed and even in some cases heightened through the addition of having real estate in your portfolio. In terms of a risk and return weighted um, uh, return on, on risk, real estate has performed very well and is an attractive investment and I'll show you some historical data to, to prove that. Um, historically again secure and stable cash flow so the cash flow is king and I think during COVID-19 cash flow management is a, is a key part of how assets will do well or, or do less well through that management of the cash flow. Um, then there's lower volatility of returns when we compare that to other financial asset classes. And one of the important things when we invest in property is that we're, we're securing rights over the land and the building. So we have a, a more active management over, over the asset than we do businesses that we invest in through the equities market. And the last point there is a really important one that rent is a, is a lease contracted obligation. Whereas when we invest in equities and businesses, the dividends we receive are not. So there's some income security bound to real estate as an asset because of those factors. Next slide, please. So I just want to throw up, I mean, our kind of academic view on, on real estate and the risks involved within direct property investment. And I've highlighted a, a few there that I think are important things to reflect on in the current uh, environment that we're in. So on the left-hand side, I've highlighted in red, um, the, the, the risk to do with tenants and the ability to pay rents. So not only in a real estate market, particularly the commercial markets, leases have got shorter. So there's, there's a, a likelihood or, a, or an apparent likelihood that things might be, be um, default or voided uh, as a cash flow. We've also got to say, well, that, that we're in an environment where tenants and business tenants might not be able to, to pay rent. So that's always something that's been with us in a, real estate portfolio, but we can call into question how we can manage that in, in the in the post-COVID situation. So I'll, I'll share some ideas on, on cash flow management in a, in a short while. I think it's really important when we look on the, on the right-hand side and something that I believe is going to be a benefit to Dubai, particularly on the institutional side, is the is funds seeking higher yields in, in our local market. So globally, um, funds are finding it hard to, to, to secure high yields because everything in a low interest environment has been squeezed quite aggressively to a low, a low yield uh, performance. But the market like Dubai, and again, we'll, sh we'll show you in some, in some data, has an opportunity for fund allocation from institutions. 
so that I think will be a forward-looking trend that we might see some some development of in our local market and then perhaps more on the residential side down down towards the bottom we've got uh, two interrelated components we've got interest rates which historically are probably the best that the local market have have seen I think sitting around three and a half percent for residential mortgages versus probably seven to eight percent in 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 uh, 2008 2009 so there's been a big drop in in the interest rates uh, in the local market and there's also an opportunity for banks to evaluate customers I think more in more detail so I think in international markets loan to value ratios are segregated across an end user and an investor so, and we don't see that distinguishing um, aspects made in the local market so I think if banks were to reward customers who have more equity in the property so give them a lower interest rate and also look at maybe heightening um, those rates for for participants who maybe put in a lower deposit that will breed and create um, business for the local market so I think there's those things to consider as well as opportunities uh, for, for banks and lending and for the real estate market next slide please so as I said, managing the cash flow and cash flow is, is, is king for, for real estate investment. Um, I think when we enter periods of uncertainty, we revert back to the prime stock. So we need to be very mindful of the tenants who are in the buildings paying, um, but also the location. So if there's a global trend that leases are getting shorter, then one would suggest that there needs to be a bit more of an asset management role for for, from the strategic side that will drive the cash flow so whether that's a value added service whether it's the, the central location of the property um, those things will drive the cash flow longer term um, of course we have to be mindful of capex differences between buildings that we choose so again professionals will be tasked with that role to identify where capex is looking attractive or where the accommodation is of a good quality that would see less expenditure on the building to get the similar uh, rental payments and then there might be other things that we consider to do with accessibility um, the facilities within the building value-added services the final point at the bottom there is really just making an observation about how we might manage the current scenario of giving tenants some rent rental flexibility but also not penalizing the landlords who have obviously worked uh, hard and invested money in the assets so perhaps being flexible during COVID-19 and then having a reversion back to the pre-existing agreement post COVID-19 through fixed increases might be a good balance between the landlord and, and tenant side next slide so this is really a historical look this is really the sort of um, golden slide in terms of um, the resilience of real estate so this is a um, data from the MSCI IPD data set in the UK commercial stock and it showcases the uh, the black bar shows the income return on the on the index the grey bar shows the capital growth and the red dots are the total return so within that 45 year period we've seen uh, 39 positive years and only six negative years so that to me suggests there's a a lot of stability around property as an investment choice regardless of the short-term um, challenges that we we face um, periodically so I think anyone looking to, to plan their career it also showcases that institutional money has a more stable cash flow than than other parts of the business perhaps in the residential sector next slide please so going back to one of my earlier points in the first slide, let's look at the correlation of, of real estate and other the other main asset classes, bonds and, and equities. And this data taken from, from the US and the UK shows over uh, you know, a 30 plus year uh, time frame the, the credentials of, of why real estate perform, is, should be part of the portfolio as a diversifier. So if we were to see those assets close to one, that would suggest that they move in correlation with each other in a positive direction so when stocks go up real estate would go up almost 
simultaneously and in line with that. But of course, this data is telling us that we've got a slightly negative relationship with bonds or a, a small positive, and we've got a low positive correlation with stocks in both the US and the UK. So that, again, we'll sh that they're, the, they're the things that we look for. And in portfolio theory, that would mean that we have a much more efficient frontier in our overall performance of the portfolio. So we're optimizing how much return we get per unit of risk. Next slide, please. So let's look at that again in, in more detail. So this is a 20 year or slightly over 20 year time frame of asset performance um, in the UK. And I've got a few other sort of stats um, pepper potted around this slide. But if we focus on the table to begin with, we can see over that time period, real estate's done relatively well. Um, the theory tells us that real estate is a is a, should be performing lower than equities because it's of a, a lower risk asset. But actually, in this table, real estate has outperformed stocks and has had a much lower volatility. So standard deviation or movement away from that that mean mean average return is lower at 9.64 for real estate versus the much more volatile 17.2 for stocks. And if we go right to the right hand side, we can see that as a return per unit of risk is, is higher for the real estate assets than, than stocks and bonds. There are some things to consider though in the current environment. So pre 2008, um, we've, we've got lower returns due to the lower interest environment that we that we are. So again, in the UK, we mean return between 2007 and 2011 is 4.1. Uh, more recently, back up at 8.9. So of course, we can showcase different periods of history where each of those assets might have done better than the other. But the big picture here is that real estate has lower volatility and, and, and relatively speaking, has done quite well. Um, as a as a total annual return as well and then we've got the average at 7.4 uh, percent as a global average next slide please so if we look at the dubai residential index uh, again provided by property finder um, what i've tried to do is just show a, a bit of an estimate on the total return for the dubai residential and and since the inception of uh, the index uh, in in um, 2012 to current day, we're looking at about a rough 8.5% per annum total return for residential overall performance, which is which is pretty strong when we compare that to to global markets. Next, please, next slide, please. So here, here's some thoughts about what I might what we might see in in the real estate markets uh, post COVID-19. So prior to COVID and also ongoing we, we were told last week that interest rates are likely to stay lower at least for the next 18 months so that environment is going to support the statistics that i showed you earlier about smoothing the volatility of an equity and bond um, portfolio so that that trend is likely to continue um, in the next few years we're likely to see due to cash flow management preferences a revisiting of, of prime assets so there might as, as uh, Lynette has indicated there's clearly data that's showing that people are choosing lifestyle benefits of space and location of course we've had a, a big drive with the lockdown towards improving our environmental uh, carbon footprint and sustainability so those things might be part of our conscious decision making uh, moving forward if we look at the opportunity cost of investment at the moment, um, real estate looks very attractive versus the other asset classes that are available for us. So if we look at rational pricing theory, real estate is a is looking good uh, as a good buy opportunity using the current data. Um, and then, of course, we have this um, presence of remote working. And I think Dubai has been creating itself as, as an incubator for innovation and entrepreneurship anyway. And I think these, this sort of experiment of remote working and reaching clients and colleagues across the globe is, is a good example of how, how those trends might be positive into the future. And as I mentioned earlier, 
I believe due to the hunt for better yields and better returns on commercial stock, institutional money will be directed towards this part of the region and Dubai will be a, a beneficiary of that alongside, alongside Asia. Next slide, please. So supporting that statistic of institutional money, um, PricewaterhouseCoopers is telling us that institutional grade real estate globally is set to grow by 50% uh, by 2030, moving up to 69 trillion US dollars. And I think that's, yeah, as I said, Dubai will be a beneficiary towards some of that allocation of, of, of fund money. Um, so th this is where I think brokers or, or people interested to develop their careers into more strategic roles might find that there's an opportunity in the current uh, environment. Um, when we work with institutional or commercial stock, we are uh, bound by a bit more job security and more recession-proof advisory roles because buildings still need to be managed, assets still need to be valued, and, and, and so on and so forth. And even more so during tough times, we want advice about our assets that we hold. So I think that is a good strategic direction for, for career building. I think real estate brokers have an excellent opportunity with their local knowledge, plus a relevant degree or technical uh, continued professional development to actually take those opportunities of working in more strategic roles with large uh, institutions. In terms of our offering at Heriot Watt, it's a relatively short qualification period. So degree plus RICS chartered status is a two to three year time period. And as I'll show you in, in a moment, that can be worked alongside your job. So sometimes people think when they go into education, they have to give up their income and their job. We've designed our postgraduate courses to be uh, facilitators of, of um, keeping your job and also upskilling yourself within a relatively short amount of time. So I personally believe that if the trends are moving more towards institutional money and more stability in the in the local market, then that's going to add stability to your careers and your earning uh, potentials. Next slide, please. So just just an overview um, on on the postgraduate program, and I th I'll go into a little bit of detail about how we enter students onto the program. We have two MSc real estate programs and I've found previously that most brokers prefer to join the investment and finance uh, program which is RICS and IPF accredited. Our courses which I've got sort of listed there towards the bottom of the slide are delivered at evening and weekend so two classes are on a Friday the morning and the, uh, the afternoon and then we have two classes um, on a weekday evening from 6.30 onwards. Um, we are the only RICS accredited face-to-face -face, uh, delivery of real estate education in the UAE and we've been here for, as I said, over 10 years. So I think that gives us a unique opportunity to provide both a, a local context to, to an international syllabus but also allow people working in the sector to, to gain a globalised education and a, and, a, and a degree that will then take them if they choose to to either continue working in the local market or go or go elsewhere as both of those qualifications at the university and the RICS are, are globally globally recognized. Next slide please. So this is a this this is a, a sort of a snapshot of how your your study plan would look like if you were to join uh, this September. Uh, students can either opt for full-time attendance so they would be doing four courses or they can opt for part-time and they would do two courses. We have two semesters of, of a total of eight courses, and then we move into a dissertation during the summer months. Once you've completed the degree, you've opened the door to start the RICS qualification process, which is known as the APC, Assessment of Professional Competence. And that's normally a, a one to two year uh, undertaking uh, with a final assessment um, to support that. Okay, next slide, please. So I just want to highlight on this slide, although education is, um, postgraduate education normally involves um, a undergraduate degree as a point of entry, 
Harriet Watt University's real estate degree allows students with relevant work experience to join the postgraduate diploma route. So you'll be attending exactly the same classes as the MSc entered students. Uh, you'll be undertaking exactly the same assessments, but it's a recognition that um, the experience that you have through work is equally as valuable, if not more, than a undergraduate degree holder. So we've allowed that ever since we've had uh, our degrees as an entry route. So I think that should be a reassuring sign that um, the entry point is, is flexible and designed um, to accommodate working professionals. Next slide, please. Um, just to, again, just to give a quick overview in terms of how we teach the syllabus. So we do have a, a range of written assessments, exams and practical projects. Um, classes are delivered um, on campus and we do also have delivery through our Blackboard online infrastructure. <clears throat> One of the benefits of, of the university programme having been here for 10 years is that we have really good and strong industry links and that allows uh, a really good networking for people who attend um, the, the programme. So it's a dual benefit really, you're getting educated but also you're building a strong local network for yourselves, particularly if you're coming from overseas. Um, there's also the job opportunities there through that alumni and through that network in the, in the classroom. Next slide please. And this is just a, an infographic or a, 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 an advert really, just in case if you want more information about our, th our, um, our three programs, if you just hover your smartphone device on that QR code, that will open up our, our website portal and you can read a bit more about the, the, um, the undergrad, our new undergraduate program as well as our two existing master's programs. And if you've got any other questions on, on the educational side of of what we do at the university, I'll be happy for you to reach out or ask questions at the end of the session. So thank you for listening. I think that finishes my, my short presentation. Thank you, Dr. Waters, for your presentation. Um, that was amazing insights and your perspective of how things are, are going through the COVID-19 situation. Um, we already have some questions for you, Dr. Waters, so I'm gonna ask a few before we get into our next uh, guest. Okay. Um, so the first one is, how does your master's in real estate program compare to others, especially like locally in the region? Okay, well, one of, one of the advantages, I guess, for us is that we're, we're the only face-to-face -face, uh, university. So we're the only RICS accredited uh, university offering this type of education in the, in the region or in Dubai. Um, and in terms of how it differentiates from other programs is that we have that localized context. So we're giving you the international, as again, the international reach or international qualification. But a lot of the assessments and a lot of the tutorials that we discuss and the people that we bring into the, the classroom uh, are sharing experiences on the local market. And, and we think that's really important when you choose to study somewhere that you you engage with, with the city and, and what better place from my perspective, to learn about real estate than than Dubai, because it's it's probably one of the best global case studies that there are. Absolutely, that is a very very important point. Um, how do you see technology impacting the local market? Okay, um, so technology generally leads to things being more efficient. So I, I listed there in the in the opening slide about. The, the the pros of, of real estate there are some negatives obviously and one of those negatives is the illiquidity so you know we're putting a large capital sum uh, depending on how fluid that transfer process is then our money is tied into that asset I think technology has the the uh, the role to play and I think Dubai is again sort of a cheerleader for this to to sort of um, think about how we can make tra the trade of real estate more liquid through technology and also the process of buying and selling more efficient. So I think that will boost um, further the, the positives of investing in real estate it, once we see technology uh, develop through the transactional process. Absolutely, and we're very ripe for it right now. Um, and that's that's been very clear and evident during this uh, situation. Definitely. Um, <clears throat> 
Okay, next question is, what's your most likely post-COVID scenario? Okay. <laughs> um, well, I think, again, the academic in me, um, I, I kind of look at, I look at the historical data, I look at what's happened previously. Um, I think at the start of the pandemic, when we spoke before on a separate occasion, um, we saw the data telling us that there's likely to be a, a, a quick reversion back to pre-COVID levels. Um, I think there's a lot of discussion about how disruptive this remote working that we're doing at the moment is going is is being on the on the use of real estate space. Uh, but I'm I see this as a necessity to of working and not as a as a takeover process. Mm. So I think the markets will soon revert back to where they were. And I think your data presentation shows that there's still the interest and the transactional inquiries and volume that would, would support where we were before this uh, health crisis. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, what could be done to bring more investment into Dubai real estate market? Okay, um, well, I, th I think in terms of a, at the granular level, so that so us as, as as users of residential space, I think there could be more, as I said at the start, there's more um, diversity or, or separation of uh, finance products. So I think in other global markets, you see end users getting preferred rates over the investor. You see uh, a distinction of how much equity you've got invested in the property versus the lower interest rate. So you, you, if you've got 50% equity into in the property, then you know logic would suggest you should be getting a more favourable interest rate. And if and if you want to put less equity in, and let's say we go back to a world where we only need to put 15%, then of course the trade-off is you're being charged a higher interest. So I think that would give um, options for people looking to invest at different points that they felt comfortable. Um, from an institutional point of view, as I said earlier, for that drive for institutional money, I think that's really, we've got the assets, we've got the um, the internationalized legislation, and now through portals like yours, we, we're getting better data. So data will always drive investment into markets. Um, 10 years ago, when we didn't have data, both residential and commercial uh, investors were kind of it was a finger in the air and it was a 10 15 percent yield target yield so I think once data is is prevalent more informed and rational decisions can be made and we can start to see things like I was showing you just there about return and risk volatility uh, and sort of marrying those two elements together so data is very important with bringing new money into Dubai Absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely, and this is um, this was like uh, obviously one of the the biggest drives with uh, coming out with uh, Moasher, which is the first official house price index for the city of Dubai. You had it in one of your slides, the the sales index that came out uh, last week, the second edition. Um, May is mm -hmm. coming out next week, and the rental index will be coming out next month. So we have a lot more data. The government's been very transparent. Um, they provided us with all of their data to create the indexes. Um, and this is something that we're very proud of at Property Finder um, and something that we will continue to offer to the market for free. So I'm gonna go to um, Dr. Waters. Um, this question came from someone who has an engineering background. They're asking, is the real estate investment and finance curriculum open and relevant for people with an engineering background? Okay, the short answer is, is is yes. We do we do find um, most candidates with an engineering background prefer to take the management and development route, but there is nothing stopping them. That's largely because they want to work in roles in the future that complement their engineering um, background and 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 then the technical real estate knowledge as well. So most of those candidates would move into a development management role um, but there is nothing stopping them engineers are great at maths they, they understand the finance world if they're interested in it as well so there's nothing stopping them we it, it is a an open uh, conversion course what we would call it in the uk a conversion course so disciplinary backgrounds don't tend to influence um, 
whether you go onto the program or not, it's more important to think about where do you want your career to go.